So what we're going to take a look at now is the CSS box model. Uh, and the box model, it just helps to define uh, the spacing around our content. And content could be anything. It could be a photo or it could be words, um, something like that. It's probably the most common. Um, so when we're looking at this, we have uh, three things that we're, we're really worried about, uh, four actually. We've got the content. So the picture or the words. We have the padding. The padding is the spacing between the content and the border. Now the border could be real. It could be something that we specify that's two pixels wide. It's a solid border and it's red. Or it could be the imaginary border that's zero. Um, but the padding is the spacing between the content and the border. Then we also have the margin. The margin is the spacing between the border, real or imaginary, and the next thing. So when you look at it uh, as an individual uh, box model, this is what you've got. When you put it together, it could look something like this. So here we have a picture, a picture, a picture, and a picture. So four pictures. We have padding around each picture. We have a border around each picture, and we have margins around each picture. So if we were to if if we were using some uh, imaginary numbers here, and we had um, a 10 pixel margin, uh, two pixel border, and 10 pixels of padding, we would have uh, if we were trying to figure out the width, it would be 10 plus 2 is 12 plus 10 is 22. The content, let's say that's 200 wide, so there's 222, 232. 234, 244. So the total width of this whole entity is 244 pixels wide. The picture is only 200 pixels wide. Then if we did 244 plus 244, it would be 488 from here all the way over to here. So these things are cumulative. They add up here across. Uh, they can be different. We can specify different padding uh, numbers around uh, top, bottom, left, right uh, can all be different. Um, again, the border, we can specify it or it, we just uh, can imagine it's there. Uh, and then the margin is how far it is between this item, which can it's, it includes the content, the padding, and the border, and the next item. Uh, and we can have margins that add together here. So if this was a 10 pixel margin and this was a 10 pixel margin, these two borders would be 20 pixels apart. Okay. So we can look down here. Uh, we have a div that has a two pixel red border. Uh, the width is 220. It has a padding of 10. Uh, the right margin is zero and the left margin is 10. So if we wanted to figure out how wide this whole thing is, it's 220 plus two. A left border and the right border, plus 10 left padding, plus 10 right padding, plus 10 left margin, plus 0, I'm sorry, 10 for the left margin, 0 for the right margin. So the whole thing would be 254 pixels wide. When we're looking at the height of this then, uh, we only specify width, we don't specify height, so it's unbound. So the height can uh, expand up and down as it needs to be to fit the content. Then we'll have 10 pixels of padding on the top and bottom, 10 and 10. And there's no uh, left and right margin specified, so we'll go with zero. So this whole thing would be, uh, however tall it really is, plus 20. Um, so we have different shorthand values that we can use for padding and margins. Um, most of the time, uh, it's easiest just to specify them. Uh, if you're going to use the same margin all the way around, you would use something like this. Margin 25 pixels means that there's a 25 pixel margin on all four sides. So 25 top, 25 bottom, 25 left, 25 right. Uh, if you're not going to do that, the next easiest thing to do is probably to specify them individually. So we can have top and bottom at 100, left and right at 50. We could have uh, 0, 100, 10, 20. They could all be different uh, if we wanted them to be. But this, for human readability, uh, specifying them all out like this is probably the easiest thing to do. Now, there, this does take up a lot of extra typing, uh, and these are a lot of extra bits that might have to be sent over a mobile um, uh, network connection so we could make this easier 
by using some shorthand like this. Uh, in this case, when they're all four laid out, uh, we go top, right, bottom, left. Uh, so kind of work at a diamond starting at the top. Um, or uh, you, we can specify if the left and the right are going to be the same, uh, then they're in the middle. So um, if you get into this and you do this a lot, this will become second nature. Until then, you probably will have to look it up. Uh, if you're not uh, on something that's very uh, bandwidth sensitive, you probably are just going to spell it all out like this. So let's take a look at how we can actually use the box model. So here I have a picture. Uh, this is uh, Miner's Castle in uh, um, Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore up on Lake Superior. And then I've got some dummy text. Um, I would like to bring this text up so that it, it uh, comes up here towards the top. So let's start getting into some of the editing here. Um, I'm calling an external style sheet. So I'm going to put all my, um, my modifications and my formatting in an external style sheet. Uh, I've opened the body. Uh, the body needs to be uh, in XHTML. Everything needs to be contained within a block element. So I'm going to use um, a div. I'm going to open a div and close a div right with the body uh, to contain everything. And now that I've got everything contained, I can start to add my uh, my photos and my, my text. So here I've put uh, this uh, particular photo of Miner's Castle. Uh, I've put within another div. That div is using a class. The class name is image. Uh, and then I've got five paragraphs of dummy text down here. Um, so if I want to try to bring that text up around the picture, uh, this is a block element. So the block element is going to uh, extend all the way across the page, which it's doing here, and then letting the text start below it. Uh, if I want to modify that, I'm going to float. I'm going to do a float left. And if I do a float left, the text comes up. Now notice we have the picture, uh, and then immediately the text is almost touching it. So I don't have any padding, border, or margin going on here right now. Uh, there's a little bit of space down here, but that's just simply because this paragraph tag ended and this paragraph tag started. Uh, if I were to get in Here I've run a bunch of the text together, um, and we can see that there's uh, there's just it's it got closer, um, but there's this is just because the the line return. If this line extended all the way across, let me go and just see if I can get rid of all the text. So now we're just dealing with one giant paragraph. There. So it's got a little bit of a space here, but that's just because of the way the lines returned. Um, so now I want to I want to work on getting that padding and that border and the margin and everything in there. So the first thing uh, that I think it's easiest to do um, get in here and let's put a border in. Uh, let's do uh, two pixels. Uh, I'm feeling like red, oh, uh, solid, and red. Now when we do that, we should see a border appear around the photo, which we do. Uh, and there's a little bit of spacing there for whatever reason. Uh, it might be just because of the way the, the line spacing is. So we got the border. So now let's put a little padding in there just to space that picture away from that border a little bit. And let's go with the 10 pixel padding. Now we should see space appear between the photo and the red. And we do. This should be 10 pixels all the way around. Looks a little more on the bottom. I still think that has something to do with this uh, formatting. But So now we have our content, we have our padding, we have our border, but we don't have a margin. And that text is all the way over touching that border. It's very hard to read. So let's stick a margin in there. 
And let's do a 10 pixel margin. And now we can start to see this open up a little bit. But notice we also have 10 pixels across the top, so it's shifted this and it doesn't quite look right when it's uh, lining up. We've also moved the photo over about 10 pixels, so that's kind of messing things up for us. So let's go back and refine that margin. Let's go with margin um, right of 10 pixels and margin bottom of 10 pixels. And when we do that, we should see the photo shift up and we should see it shift left and kind of get more, more back in line. We can alternate the padding. So we can have padding top left, right, and bottom. Uh, and let's, instead of doing 10 pixels, let's do 30 pixels on the bottom. Uh, this should make it look a little bit more like one of those old timey uh, Polaroid photos, if that's the kind of thing uh, that you're into. And we might want to space that even just a little bit farther. The other thing um, that I just happened to think of, had naming this um, image uh, is kind of confusing uh, because there's also an HTML element named image. So let's call this uh, photo. And so we'll have to change it in the box model. Make sure we didn't break anything. Nope, still working good. Um, and now we can also come down here then and do a body element. Um, we can put a background color here. We should see. Um, so within our box model, the margin takes on, on the body color, uh, and the the background uh, or the the padding will take on the the div color that you've specified in there. Um, we can add one more thing here. We can put and uh, we specify the image tag, and we can do border uh, two pixels. Let's see if this does anything. Uh, so we would have to dig a little deeper into our CSS to figure out how to actually put a border around the image. Uh, but it gives you a good idea of the box model. It gives you a good idea of how to uh, space out the uh, uh, the divs and, and uh, the text away from the divs and those kinds of things. And again, this picture or this photo could just as easily be replaced by more text. Um, let's see if we can just do that real quickly. Uh, copy this. So let's get rid of the image. And we'll just stick a little text in there. And so this is what it would look like. We're not specifying the width. Uh, we might need to go down and do that. There we go. And so now we can tell that there's 10 meg of padding or 10 pixels of padding here, 10 pixels of padding there. There's no margin top or left. There is a margin on the right. Uh, and then we've got the border all the way around. So this was the CSS box model.